Now, one of the uses that you're going to get in this chapter for a problem like this is going to be trying to prove that something's a right triangle. So let's go back to three points again. So point A is at 2, 1. Point B is at 4, 0. And point C is at 5, 7. Now again, if you remember from Pythagorean theorem, where we're tying in with the distance formula, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So basically, we're going to say, let's find the distance of these three. So I need to find the distance, I'll go this way, distance from a to b. I'm going to need to find the distance from A to C, and I'm going to need to find the distance from B to C. And then I can fill each of these in to one of these three distances and see if I actually get the left side of the equation to equal the right side. So let's do distance from A to B right here. Now let's go with our shortcut we talked about before. Change in X, change in Y. So change in X from 2 to 4 is 2. We'll square that. From 1 to 0, they're 1 apart, so we'll square that, find the sum, and find the square root. So here we're going to get 4 plus 1, or square root of 5. Do the same here. And again, we'll do a shortcut, change in x, change in y. So from a to c, the x's go from 2 to 5. So that's a change of 3, square it. The y's from 1 to 7, that's a change of 6. Square that, find the sum, find the square root. 3 squared is 9, 6 squared is 36. And then find the square root of that, which is square root of 45. Now, on this, square root of 45, if I factor everything out, will actually simplify to 3 square root of 5. But because I'm going to take this and just plug it in up top here and square everything, the square is going to cancel the square root because they're inverse operations. So I really don't need to simplify this one right now. So let's do our last side, B to C. So if we look at B to C, X's from 4 to 5 have a change of 1. Square that. Y's, 0 to 7. That's a difference of 7. Square that. Find your square root. So 1 squared obviously is 1. 7 squared, 49. Find the square root of that, and I get square root of 50. Now again, square root of 50 would actually break down and simplify into 5 square root of 2. But, like I said earlier with this one, we're not going to have to do that for this problem. You can if you want to. So what I need to do is find something squared equals the sum of the other two squares. So in this case, I can actually do square root of 50 squared equals square root of 5 squared plus square root of 45 squared. Because remember, inverse operations, squares and square roots are going to cancel each other. So I'm left with... 50 equals 5 plus 45, which obviously is true. And since we proved that it does work, we know that these three vertices of a triangle would actually give us a right triangle. So that's one of the applications. You can use it to prove or verify if a triangle actually is a right triangle. If you remember from geometry, you don't want to trust your eyes. So you want to go with the mathematical proof on that. All right, one other thing that we learned as far as a formula in this chapter, or in this section 1-1, one, one, is midpoint formula. All right, so midpoint formula, it's basically what it says. We're going to use it to find the midpoint of any segment. 
So let's say this is the line that we're going to deal with. We'll give it an endpoint over here. We'll call that point A. Give it another endpoint over here. We'll call that point B. And just a quick reminder, midpoint is just finding the exact center of a segment. So there's our midpoint. So what we're going to do is we're still going to find from our ordered pair here an x1 and a y1, other uh, ordered pair x2 and y2. We're going to find the middle based on those two things. So here's what the midpoint formula says. Midpoint formula says this. We're going to sum the x values and find the average. We're going to sum the y values and find the average. And because midpoint is actually a point, these are going to be written as an ordered pair. So let's give a few or a little value to each of these. Let's give, well, let's do a change of color here. So when we look at this one, let's say A is at point negative 5, negative 3. B is going to be at point 9, 3. And we need to find where is the midpoint of those two in the segment. So let's set it up. Add your x's. So negative 5 plus 9. Divide by 2 to find your average. Do the same for the y's. So negative 3 plus 3. Divide by 2 to find the average. And again, remember the midpoint's an ordered pair, so let's put it together. Negative 5 plus 9 is 4. Divided by 2. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0 divided by 2. So when we simplify this, it's basically going to tell us our midpoint 4 divided by 2 is 2, 0 divided by 2 is 0, so the midpoint would be at 2, 0. So endpoint at negative 5, negative 3, and 9, 3, the exact middle of that line segment connecting A and B would be at the ordered pair 2, 0. So again, pretty simple to work with. To finish out section 1-1, one, one, you'll have to go through your book, but uh, they give a few examples of some different applications based on distance formula and so on. Uh, so make sure that you take a look at those and get a little bit comfortable with how they are applied to the story problems. And then you've got section 1-1 one, one mastered.